which shoe is better to hoop in? The original Nike LeBron 19 or the newly released low top version of the 19s? Today we're putting these two models and these two iterations from LeBron's newest shoe head to head to see how they compare. But really quick, if this is your first time checking this out, feel free to drop a follow or subscribe wherever you're watching and give this video a like. We would greatly appreciate that. So starting off with the box and the price, the LeBron 19s come in a black box with some designs faintly worked all over it. And the see-through LJ logo is a nice touch. I did like that in there. I mean, we can pretty much just kind of end it right there as far as the box stuff, because the low top version, it is gonna come in pretty much the same exact box. No changes really made there. But as for pricing, LeBron has one of the more expensive lines out there right now with the original 19s retailing for $200 even. That's definitely gonna put these on the higher side. But I was pretty surprised and happy to see the LeBron 19 low drop all the way down to $160. So I mean, it's still gonna be one of the pricier models out there compared to a low, but I mean, LeBron is on his 20th signature shoe, so it is kind of expected. They, I mean, they aren't gonna get cheaper all of a sudden. So doing a quick rundown for the appearance of these shoes, I mean, with this being the same model, just kind of at two different heights, clearly there are going to be some similarities, but I'll just kind of start off with the original LeBron 19s and then get to what changes were made on the low top version. So this original LeBron 19, like sweatsuit colorway, was actually the first to release, like it's part of a whole Space Jam theme. And if you peel back that overlay or just like that top layer. There's gonna be some markings on the upper that make out the map of the Nike's world headquarters and the Warner Brothers lot. So you know, I just thought that was a pretty sweet touch that is of course gonna be just specific to this colorway. But I mean, looking at the model, looking at more so the model, they did build this shoe up a little bit more compared to last year's LeBron 18. It's gonna remind me more of like the general structure that a bunch of shoes have kind of followed in LeBron's line in the past. You're gonna have that air bubble back there on the, or that like air pocket that starts on the ankle and it goes around the back side of the shoe. I just think it's a pretty nice setup. Up. And then on the side of these, you can actually see those air units through like a little window. I think most LeBrons do that. I just think it's a really cool aspect for this shoe. But now to kind of transition a little bit more into the LeBron 19 lows. I mean, I was, I'm just like drawn, drawn more to low top shoes. So I do like the look for these a lot more. I just think it's a really clean design. But as for the model structure, I mean, the midsole setup is going to be mostly similar, but you can only see the cushioning units in the back half of the shoe on the night, on the LeBron 19 lows. The front half, it is going to be filled in. It's kind of trapped in by that like uh, caged in by that overlay there and then the nike swoosh on the midsole is going to be a really cool setup that pink nike swoosh and honestly i like how they kind of broke the shoe up into three separate parts because on the original Le lebron 19s i mean you just had like the base and the overlay design going on but on the lows i mean that overlay on the toes that's going to be like a cheetah print it feels a little bit more durable and kind of rough i don't really want to get in the material section right now but i just think the whole you know three-part setup is kind of cool and then on the tongue, you're going to get a lion's face with a little LeBron tag on there too. And I mean, the whole shoe just feels really quality compared to some other lines when they try to do the same thing. But I mean, these are still going to be somewhat expensive. But I mean, as far as the appearance goes, I do like the setup for both of these 19 models. So getting into more of the materials and the performance side and starting off with the cushioning, as you probably guessed, there are going to be a lot of similarities over these next few sections, but there's still going to be some differences to go along with them. So looking at the original LeBron 19s, these are going to have a Cushlon foam midsole, which is meant to be softer and more responsive than Bylon, and these do give you that nice and springy feel. Nike also used a Zoom Air unit in the forefoot, which is like the front portion of the shoe, and that's going to be paired with some thick Max Air units that you can actually see through the shoe. I mean, you get a really good like window through the side of that shoe, like I talked about in the appearance section. And whenever you apply some force, like you can really see that compression for like the material, so you can see those like units at work there. And the impact protection is really nice on the LeBron 19 whenever you're landing from jumps or just, you know, kind of making any type of movement on the court. But now switching it over to look a little closer at the LeBron 19 low, I was a little surprised to see like, you know, that React Tech show up on the outsole that you can see right there because I know that the original re release just didn't have any React technology in that setup. So LeBron, the LeBron 19 low is still gonna have those same like Max Air units. You can see them through the midsole, but I mean, instead of using Cushlon, these are gonna get some Nike React technology, which is just a lightweight foam meant to give you a smooth and responsive feel on the court. That's like what the white portion of the shoe is going to be, where you see like the grooves and you know that stuff going on there. But the front half of it's actually going to be caged in by that overlay. That is obviously going to be one small change because now you're not going to be able to see all the cushioning units at work there for this release. But I mean, from a performance aspect, these do play pretty much the same, which would be considered really good for cushioning. 
mean, you're gonna have roughly the same setup, but I will say that if I'm really trying to like feel out a difference, the foam is a little bit softer on the original LeBron 19s, but not by a lot. And I don't really notice them while they're on the court, like while I'm out there playing, that's more when I'm just like kind of standing around. And I mean, both of these models, they're gonna require like minimal break in time, if any. Like the sock liner is really padded on both, just to kind of enhance an already comfortable feel. And I mean, cushioning has always kind of been one of the selling points on LeBron's shoe line. And once again, that's gonna hold true here. For the materials in the support, I think the original LeBron 19s made some pretty solid improvements to this year's model. So they kind of give you like that shoe within a shoe type feel. You're going to get like a full inner sleeve that conforms to your foot really well. And the laces actually feed through that overlay to really lock your foot into the shoe. I didn't really love the support on the LeBron 18s last year. I just don't think Nike did enough to reinforce the upper to keep your foot from like sliding around. But they did a few things on this year's model to fix that. So first, I mean, these are gonna run up a little bit higher. That's just gonna allow you to lace the foot up around your ankle a little. I mean, that might help a little bit. But Nike also added a transparent flywire cable on top of that overlay that's gonna extend up from the midsole and that's gonna help you keep or help keep your foot just really secure within the shoe. And then you're gonna have a little bit of an outrigger if you look at these from the bottom that kind of protrudes out from the side just to kind of brace your foot a little bit more, give you some added balance. So I was really impressed with the support on, the, uh, on this year's design and the materials that they added to the shoe i mean just all felt really quality but now switching it over to look at the lebron 19 lows i mean with these being cut down you're going to see a few changes to this material section so as far as the upper goes it's kind of split up into three different sections like i kind of touched on in the appearance spot so i mean for that overlay on the toe it's going to be a little bit rougher feel it kind of feels like sandpaper where that cheetah print is and then in the middle portion where you got that tan material, it's gonna be like a woven material and it kind of looks like a webbing or like a netting. And that's gonna be covering up or kind of running over what is the heel portion of the shoe in that zebra print which is gonna just feel like a basic textile, but it's actually gonna connect all the way up to the cheetah pattern. You just can't see it because of that netting running over the middle. So I actually really do love this setup and it puts us in a really good spot to talk about the support, which is a great aspect for this low top uh, shoe, especially for a low top design. So the laces are gonna feed through that tan netting and that overlay is gonna do a really good job of just you know keeping your foot really secure so you aren't like sliding around in that model. And something Nike added to this year's like low top edition, is gonna be some Achilles pads in the sock line just to kind of help with the support. So I mean, both of these models, they hold up really well for the materials and for the support both. But I mean, I mean, especially after like the model struggling last year, I mean, I did, I did love to see them kind of get that necessary improvement there. But another reason that I am just kind of more drawn to low top shoes, especially when we're talking about LeBron's line, is they're just gonna be lighter. Like, I mean, the original LeBron 19s was and still is the heaviest shoe that I've ever played in, weighing 594 grams for a size 10 and a half. But the lows shaved off over 100 grams and they weigh in at 478 grams for the same size. So, I mean, that is a pretty big weight discrepancy there. 478 grams is still a little bit heavy for a low top shoe, but I mean, it is the best it's gonna get and it's gonna be noticeably lighter than the original 19s. To finish off with traction, the original LeBron 19s got a different look from last year's design. And honestly, I'm cool with that because I wasn't a huge fan of how the LeBron 18s played. And I personally think this new setup plays a little bit better. So Nike went with a micro-engineered blade pattern that's actually meant to resemble LeBron's crown logo, kind of shrunk down like that King James, James logo, just kind of shrunk down and then they repeated it a bunch of times. And these aren't really sticky, but I mean, I do think they have a little bit more grip. And they also, Nike also used like, you know, an all rubber outsole, which should be decent for outdoor use. But I mean, remember this is a higher price shoe, so may not really be the best for that. But looking at the LeBron 19 lows, this is another spot where these are gonna get, you know, the same look as the high version, as far as the pattern and how they play too, for the most part. I mean, like I was just saying, they're gonna be a small step up from the 18s, but still not the most impressive in my opinion. I tested out the LeBron 9 retros a few weeks ago and you know, I just did not like the traction on those at all. They were super inconsistent. And honestly, I wouldn't say that about either of these models here for the LeBron 19. But at the same time, I wouldn't consider both of these models to be a super sticky model to play in. So, I mean, don't be expecting that. And you're gonna get the, you know, the same durable uh, outsole or the same rubber outsole uh, on the lows, that, I mean, compared to the LeBron 19 highs, but I, mean, I don't really know if I trust those mini logos all that well. So, I mean, keep that in mind if you're kind of looking for something to hoop in outdoors. But to finish off with sizing, I went true to size on both models. The original LeBron 19s fit perfect true to size. The lows do fit a little bit more snug from what I've noticed. So for the final ratings and starting off with the appearance, I was kind of pointing to this all review, but I just think low tops look sick. I think they look better than highs. 
And I actually do like the look for the LeBron 19 high, but I mean, I'm definitely a bigger fan of the lows. So I'm gonna start off going with the LeBron 19 low variation first. For cushioning, these have a lot of the same stuff being used. There are a few differences, but they play pretty much the same. Like the lows feel a little bit more responsive. The flaps up near the ankle on the original 19s, they actually kind of bother my foot at times, but it's just not a clear way to lean here. So I'm gonna start off with a tie. As for the materials, I mean, we're talking about the same shoe. So it's gonna be kind of tough to choose a clear winner here. Both models feel really high quality. So once again, we'll go with the tie. For the support, that's another spot that both of these shoes do really well. Like the original LeBron 19s, you have the outrigger, the flywire cable overlay, the inner sleeve for your foot, just all kinds of support features. And the only problem here, if you want to call it a problem, is that you know, the lows have all of those exact same features. So we're gonna default to a tie here again. And then for traction, I mean, line up the ties, knock them down, because we have a clean slate of ties here. You get the same exact pattern and it feels and plays the same. But even with the four ties, I'm going with the Nike LeBron 19 low as the better shooter hoop in. For me, it's pretty easy on how I got here. I mean, for, for, for performance, the actual tech specs and how the modifications play, you're looking at a strikingly similar shoe. I mean, that's a good thing because it's literally the same shoe. But I mean, now we're talking about the lows, which kept the same good support. I mean, it's as the high model, but now you're gonna have a lighter shoe and it's gonna be a cheaper shoe to play in by $40. So I feel like that's one of the biggest things holding back the original LeBron 19s for this year. It's just the heaviest shoe that I've ever played in. So having a low top option that cuts off some of the weight and is gonna be more affordable, that's the shoe I gotta rock with. Thank you guys for taking some time to watch. If you're interested in buying the Nike LeBron 19 low and you wanna support the channel, just tick the link here on screen or we have links for both shoes down below or in our bio. So feel free to check that out. But until next review, I'm Landon from Shoewear. Peace.